This program was made possible by matching funds from the Leopold Center for Sustainable Agriculture at Iowa State University and the Agricultural Marketing Resource Center in cooperation with IDEA, Information Development Expanding Awareness, and Iowa State University Extension. Growing grapes and making wine is one of agriculture's oldest and most romantic industries. But success requires persistence, patience, passion, and money. Well, the people who get into the business are, there, are in it because they love wine. But I don't think it's a, strictly a good investment. There are lots of other places where you can put your money and get money back. But if you make that decision and you're, and you're willing to do that, then you have the opportunity to produce wine in a style that you like or that you th at least think you can sell. Uh, you have the opportunity to establish a, a place like this, a winery where people come to do things. It's actually a lot of fun to be in the tasting room on a busy weekend. You know, we're, we, we might have three people behind the bar down there. We're all busy all the time, you know, in a big day on a big Saturday. And that's, it's great, it's fun, it's exciting. Making wine though is an art and a science and those two things together have to be um, that you just cannot separate the two you have to be able to make something technical and be able to make the flavor work for you too so um, as I grow as I've developed from being a garage wine into being the largest winery in Iowa I have always remembered that the most important thing we do is make good wine so it all comes back to, can you be successful only if you make good wine? The wine industry in the Midwest is enjoying a resurgence of interest, and many like you are hoping to realize their dream. Yet those who are reaping the rewards will tell you success depends on doing your homework and developing your strategy before you jump in. It's all about understanding the total wine package. In today's marketplace, when you think about growing grapes or developing a winery, you must also think of tours through the vineyard, tasting rooms, catering, festivals, clubs, newsletters, the companion activities and events consumers have come to expect with their wine. Consumers want the total package. Why do people come to my winery? It's because uh, we're giving them an experience. Part of that is that we have a, a beautiful location and we have good wine. Uh, our crowd primarily is upper 30s, 40s, 50s, people that have learned to enjoy life. And this is some place they can come and sit down under the umbrellas or in the shade and enjoy the music that we have here on Sunday afternoons. Um, it's one of, those, one of those things that are, are a treat to yourself. I think a lot of people um, come up to us and they say, hey, you know, I want to grow grapes or I want to start a winery. And I think there's a very romantic notion about growing grapes and making wine. And there is, there's a lot of romance. Uh, but a lot of folks don't see what goes on behind the scenes. And there's a lot of hard work that goes into it. Uh, especially here in the Midwest, it's very labor intensive to grow grapes. And you have to find the right varieties and you have to um, do your research and find out what's going to grow well here and, and uh, how to grow that grape in the Midwest. And then once, once you get it started, you know, there's going to be a long time period before you, receive, you even see a return on those, those investments. And then it goes into the cellar, and there's a lot of work that takes place in that cellar. It's very, very labor intensive. And so I think a lot of people want to get into the industry or want to get into the business, and they kind of have these blinders on. It's just going to be, oh, we're going to have so much fun making wine and selling it. It's a lot more than that. There's a lot of hard work that goes into it. And I try to uh, emphasize that when anybody comes up and says, hey, I want to grow grapes, or I want to own my own winery. I'll say, well, get ready to change uh, your lifestyle because it's going to take a lot of work, a lot of hard work to do that and be successful. Just what does it cost in dollars and time to establish a vineyard or winery in the Midwest? 
University Extension scientists and specialists throughout the Midwest are available to provide information on all aspects of the wine industry. The startup costs, uh, it's, it depends upon uh, the cost of the vines. This could vary from as low as a dollar per vine on up to, uh, for some of the patented material, approaching $3, $3 or slightly over $3 a vine. Based upon uh, what we've done on um, budgeting, uh, it's going to range uh, from somewhere between uh, four to five thousand dollars an acre for uh, the initial year of the uh, purchasing, uh, planting, uh, establishing the trellis system and the cultural practices that first year. The numbers that I've seen indicate that it's usually about fifty thousand dollars for every thousand gallons of wine making capacity. So a 20,000 gallon a year winery will cost about a million dollars for equipment, plus the building, plus the land. Uh, and then you're going to need to have operating capital. You're going to have to build inventory. So it, uh, it, it would not be unusual to uh, have two or three years worth of equity uh, poured into this operation before you start seeing a, a return on your investment. If we do everything right, uh, we should see a partial crop in the third year, a uh, full crop by the fifth year. Uh, if we consider that um, we could produce three and a half tons per acre in full production, and we're going to get $1,000 per ton for that, uh, our budget uh, estimates uh, out that it's going to take nine years to break even. Gathering as much background information as possible in the beginning keeps you from being overwhelmed later on. Use the internet. Check out University Extension sources. Contact grape and wine organizations and visit vineyards and wineries. Not before, but once I took over the job, I realized that there were a lot of things that, that I didn't know and so I made it a habit those first four or five years to take a week every year and go work at another winery somewhere. So I worked on the West Coast in California and Oregon. I worked on the East Coast in New York and Pennsylvania. Um, people were very welcoming. I'd call up somebody that I didn't know and say, you know, I'm a new winemaker. I'd like to come work for you for a week. I won't, you know, I don't want any pay. I just want to be there to see how, how to do things. So I, I, I always learned some valuable stuff. Actually, what I like to tell people is this is a hobby. And it's gotten a little out of control, but this actually started as a hobby, uh, growing some grapes. Uh, we had a couple hundred vines, wanted to learn how to make wine, grow grapes, um, you know, give it to family, friends, just something to do for fun. Uh, after a couple of years, we looked around at some of the wonderful wineries like in Missouri and Michigan, Indiana, and we thought, why, why not Nebraska? And uh, one thing led to another, and almost seven years later, here we are. Whether your ambition is to grow grapes to sell to another winemaker or your dream is to make great wine and have your own winery, it's critical to do your homework before you begin. To understand the total wine package, find out what happens behind the scenes in the Midwest wine industry.